Hey guys, welcome to PV Garage. Today we're going to have a look at this Smart 451 clutch actuator. I'm going to show you guys how to take it off the car, how to do a little service on it, how to reinstall it, and then even how to adapt it using a laptop and uh, some special Mercedes software that we have. Now the reason to do this is because these can be pretty problematic in the 451 and a lot of times uh, the clutch actuator will fail and prevent you from being able to drive the car. So doing this preventive maintenance or even uh, if you have one that's failed that's seized up sometimes you can save them by doing this service and reinstalling it uh, so I'll show you guys how to do all that for now let's jump in and I'll show you how to remove this from the car Now one of the dead giveaways that this thing's hurting is just the sound that it makes. So listen to this. So we're under the car here. You can see there's two bolts coming up from the bottom. Now before you remove these bolts, which by the way are e-torx, so hopefully you have a, have a set of e-torx sockets to be able to work on this. You can see that the bolts are sitting in slots on the clutch actuator. So before you remove it, it's a good idea to mark very closely where those bolts are sitting in the slots. Now, if you have the tool to be able to adapt the clutch afterwards, it's not as big of a deal. But if you don't have that tool, that's the Mercedes software to adapt the clutch actuator, you wanna make sure that those are very well marked because you need to reinstall it exactly in the same position that it was when you removed it. So those two bolts out, now we can get our third bolt, which is on the other side of the clutch actuator, so kind of at the front of the motor. And we can get in there just with an extension, e-torx again, and same here, the bolt's very tight, so use lots of penetrating lube and rock that bolt back and forth in the beginning, especially to try and work some of that penetrating lube into the threads so you don't break that bolt. They can be a real pain in the butt if you try to remove them and um, the bolt breaks off because then you have to get the rest of the bolt out of the aluminum casting and it's very difficult. The other issue is it's very easy to round the head of the bolt off here so be very careful as you're doing this and then the last thing you're going to do once those bolts are out is remove the electrical connector that's just you can see a little bit on the right here from where that bolt is there's one electrical connector you're just going to undo that guy and then remove that whole clutch actuator. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed my clutch actuator from the car. You can see where the bolts would have been. So it would have been up under the car like this, bolt, bolt, uh, bolt, have it holding everything in. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this cover. So the way we're gonna do that, there's a bunch of bolts. You can see where the bolts go in from the other side here very clearly. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a T20 Torx on this side. I'm going to just pull those six bolts out and then this cover should come right off. And that last bolt, I can't get in with that socket. I'm gonna have to get in there with this guy. Not my favorite tool to use, but when you're stuck, All right now, with a little persuasion, not much persuasion at all, as it turns out, and here's our whole uh, assembly. Now, this one in particular, I don't know why it's so wet inside, because uh, I don't believe that this is the OEM fluid. I've seen people take them apart and they were really dry inside. But yeah, so I'm gonna give this a good clean, try to get some lube in it, and then seal it back up. Okay, so I've cleaned everything out with some parts washer and uh, even though this thing was filled with some liquid, once I got in there and started to clean it, I actually blew out quite a few chunks with compressed air. So it did have quite a bit of debris in it, even though it was filled with that liquid, you'd think it would come out with the liquid, but it didn't. And now we can have a look. It's a little bit easier to see sort of the guts here. So if you look right inside, right below here, you can kind of see the little steel screw and you can see the tracks on that plastic where it's riding and that screw is what's driven by the motor on this side, the little stepper motor. 
And that's what's gonna spin this whole assembly and give you your clutch actuation, essentially. So we can see in here, there's a few things moving around, but the main thing is that screw. And so what we wanna do is we wanna fill this gap, especially as much as we can, try to get as much grease as we can on that uh, track and on the screw and try to get that all uh, well lubricated. And that should give us back good clutch function and keep it working for a while. Okay, now the grease I'm gonna use is this Belray waterproof grease. It's kind of like a dielectric grease, but you know, less expensive maybe than dielectric grease and for a slightly different purpose. But this stuff will do really well in here. And I'm just gonna try and pack this kind of similar to the way you would do a wheel bearing. Just get that grease into that track and then onto that screw as much as I can. Okay, so here's a learning moment. You know, as I was packing the grease in there, it started to occur to me, I'm like, as I was looking at the whole linkage and how everything went together, I'm like, the clutch looks like it's in its extended position. And I know that whenever you turn the key off, it retracts. So I thought it was really weird that this one seemed to be extended. So I went out and I actually, keep in mind, this is a spare clutch actuator that I took off a car in a junkyard. And I got out there and I took apart the one that was on the car, which is this guy here. And as you can see, it's uh, compressed or you know caged. So what I did was I just took this one, I put the cover back on and bolted it back on just to keep any dirt out or anything like that. And I just plugged it in and turned the key on and sure enough, it pulled it right back, compressed that spring right here. And now you can see much more clearly the, uh, the gearing that's inside there. So here it's much clearer. You can see that sort of, uh, that gear that the little stepper motor rides on. So now the stepper motor shaft is like way over here and you can see how it would spin that around. So what I'm gonna do now, it actually gives me a lot better access in here to get some grease into everything. So I'm gonna keep kind of getting in there with my finger and greasing things up. And then uh, I think we should be ready to throw this back in the car. So I've gotten in everywhere that I can kind of get at with my grease and stuff. There's a little ball in there. Uh, for the shaft that goes in and out. I've made sure to get some grease on it and I've kind of tried to get some on everything that I can see there. So, I mean, I feel like that's as good as it's gonna get. I'm gonna throw this cover back on and then just before we throw this back on the car, there is one last thing I'm gonna do. I just want to open up this other clutch actuator. This is the one that was making a lot of noise on the car and show you guys what that looks like on the inside. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy. Oh, that cover comes right off too. Ooh, yeah. So this is what more what I expected. You can see it's, it's quite a bit of debris in here coming out. It's totally, totally dry. You can see there's schmutz everywhere. It's not surprising that it's making so much noise. Like, just look, it's hard to see in where that shaft is, but there's just a lot of a lot of stuff and then this eh, it's still not super it still kind of resembles a grease but um you know there's no doubt why this thing was making so much noise it's very dry even up here the slidey bits um that's the technical term by the way the slidey bits you can see they're totally dry so this thing's going to need a good cleaning and repacking and then i'll keep this guy as a spare for use on another smart car because no doubt i'll have another one that needs a clutch actuator and that way I can have one that's ready to go. Okay, so next up I'm gonna throw this thing back in the car. Now, I've already shown you guys how to do that once. We're gonna bolt it up, a little bit of preload, tighten the bolts down, and then I'm just gonna hop and fast forward right to uh, the programming part in this video, get right back to where we started before we had to take this thing off and give it a service, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and try and teach in our clutch. I'm in the car here with the key on and the engine off, and I've got DAS booted up here, so we're going to get into our ECU. Now we're going to go to systems, going to go to our sprint shift module. 
and then we'll go down to actuations, go to clutch, and then learn clutch. Now I haven't replaced the clutch, I've just replaced the actuator or serviced it. And then basically we're just gonna go through, it's gonna ask me a bunch of points. I'm going to uh, have to do a couple of engine off, ignition on procedures, and then a couple procedures with the engine on. And I won't bore you guys with all those details, but this is where you would go to do that clutch adaptation. Basically, if you just do this process and get through it and get a successful relearn on your clutch, the car should drive beautifully. Mine always gives me a bit of a hard time because I think there's a little bit of a mechanical issue with my actual clutch. So like the pressure plate and the disc. Um, so I always have to fiddle with it a little bit, but for you guys, it should be good. It should go through this learn process real easy. So hopefully by doing this service, you guys can keep your original clutch actuator going a little bit longer, get a few more miles out of the car before you have to make that big payment and that outlay of cash on that $700 actuator. If you guys like this video, please um, like it, comment, subscribe to the channel, all those fun things, it really helps us out. Uh, thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.